Hey, it's Don, the auction professor. Today, we're going to talk about the top five biggest mistakes that resellers make. I've ranked them from most important to least important, and let's start with the least important. Number five is not understanding the legal ramifications and the laws that you have to follow to run your business. This can get you in serious trouble throughout your career as a business owner. If you don't file your taxes, you haven't reported this, you don't have the proper licenses, all of these aspects are key factors that could affect your business in the long run. Many people just don't realize that they need licenses either from a city, a county, or a state, or that they have to register with many states as well. Tax is another thing, whether it be sales tax or income tax. Those are both legal obligations that every business owner should take care of when they are supposed to do it. So if you're not filing, you're not correct with your paperwork, you didn't get the proper licenses, all you got to do is dig into it. You can look into your state's laws with the Department of Taxation, same with the county and city licensing offices, and they will set you up with all the information you need. With number four, storage-related issues, this goes into storing items, labeling items, knowing where the items are, knowing that they won't be damaged while they're in your possessions. I hear this all the time that many people have stored something they can't figure out where they stored it at or it was damaged or destroyed during the storage process. So these are key things that you have to take care of before you get too heavily into your business. You can label them, you can put them in bins. I have videos on that as well. So those are things that you do to keep track of your items in storage. We also seal items in plastic. We protect them while they're in storage. We treat them as if they've already been sold and sometimes even wrap items ahead of time. This keeps them in good standard. Everything is in a bin, a tote, a big plastic bin of some sort. That helps protect them as well. They're all shelved, numbered, labeled, and the whole works. The third spot is in price. Many people do research, but they do improper or bad research and don't realize the prices of what their items will sell for. They'll underprice them and they'll sell super quick and they'll lose money on the sales or they'll overprice them drastically where they will sit there for a very long time and won't get any money out of the item. These are two key factors. Many people just don't understand how to price the items that they actually sell. They found them and they've never messed with them before. That is a key factor. Not knowing enough about the items is another aspect of this and why many people do not price correctly. I get this comment all the time that they underprice that they found out later on. Do your research in the beginning. Make sure you know what your items are worth before you list them. eBay is not the only platform. Same with Amazon. We price things across the web. We do not just rely on one single site for pricing information, especially if it's a rare or vintage item. If it's older, there may not be enough pricing information on eBay to price it correctly. Many people looking up rare or scarce items will see one or two that sold on eBay, say for 10 bucks, and they won't realize that they were bins and they were underpriced to begin with and will just routinely price them the same way they see them priced on the comps. But if you research more, maybe it's WorthPoint, PopPsych, or any of these other sites that will price things for you, you'll find that some of the items that you're pricing low should have been priced two, three, four, five times what they are. We routinely get more than most people do on many items that we sell because we correctly dig into the prices and not just basing them on eBay's comps, but on many different comps and sites that can help you price them correctly. Just because someone else sold something for one price doesn't mean that it wasn't worth way more than the price they sold it for. That happens on a daily basis on eBay, Amazon, and across the web. Working our way down to the worst mistake you can make at number two is making bad purchases. Many times it's simply by not doing research that you purchase something that really isn't worth what you've paid for it. You're not going to get a return on your investment because of that. Other aspects can be going to an auction, setting a price, and then getting in an auction frenzy and paying two or three times what you should have for the items at the auction. I hear that constantly daily. I hear that aspect of it. So those are two of the biggest ones. Not doing your research and your homework though is the cause of most all of the overpaying. Another thing to think about when you're making purchases is just because there's a lot of material for a very low price doesn't mean there's any money to be made. And in many cases when you're buying these massive lots you didn't do your homework and the price is just too good to be true, you may spend more money on time. Your time is money as well. So if it takes you a long time to go through this and at the end of the day you're not making anything, you're wasting even more money on your time. 
So do your research ahead of time before you purchase it, even if it's a huge lot, even if it's a big bulk bunch of stuff. I know my prices, or if I don't know them, I look them up every time. I don't care if it's a thousand items for 50 bucks. I still want to make sure that that thousand items is even worth selling. Many items just aren't worth selling, no matter how many of them you can get for how much money. It's just not a factor in making purchases. And with the auctions, if you're at an auction, write down the prices you're going to pay for each lot number. Don't go over it no matter what. As long as you've done your homework, that price should be your ceiling. The highest you will go on that item. Anything over that mark doesn't make sense because your expenses into it could be more. You could be wrong. The price could fluctuate. And at the end of the day, you may not make any money on it. So keep your costs at a minimum and do your research when you buy items. Don't buy anything unless you know it personally, have sold it, or you've searched it online through comps. And again, eBay is not the only site to search for comps for items before purchasing them. If you're on Amazon FBA, you know Amazon is a good source as well. Plus, there's outside third-party sources for almost any one of these apps. eBay is included in that list. So use them if you need them. If you don't know your items, study them, research them, pull out your phone, and you're going to save a lot of time and mistakes by not buying bad items. And the worst mistake you can make is not knowing the platform you sell on. Doing the wrong thing can get your account banned instantly on many sites. Whether it be selling something that you didn't know was illegal on a site, selling banned items on a site, selling items with the wrong description, or putting in keywords such as Velcro into your title or onesies. Items and words that you can't use because the owner of those rights bans their use on eBay or other platforms. Selling products that you have no right to sell is another one. Certain products ban third-party sellers from selling them. They will report them to eBay or Amazon, and you will get gated or locked or smacked on the wrist from it and could have your account suspended the very first time you do it. Things just like not using the right color background in Amazon can get you dinged or kicked off the site. If you didn't know, 85% of the photo for Amazon, any item you have, has to be of the item. The other 15% can only be a white background. Anything over and above that can get you in trouble. Having poor quality photos on Amazon can get you in trouble. Putting things in your photo on eBay can get you in trouble too. They are now working towards an all-white background policy also. So these are key things that you have to know. Not knowing the shipping aspects and the policies on eBay as well can get you in trouble by not shipping the items out in stated time frames. Not handling things correctly, such as refunds or returns, can get you dinged as well. Not understanding or describing items correctly for that category based on the site's rules and regulations can get you in trouble. On Amazon, for example, if you can't sell a specific item in a category, many people will just try and sell it in a different category without even thinking about it. That is a no-no and can get you banned for life off of Amazon. So there's so many things that you have to know before you ever sell on the site. This is the worst mistake you could make is just not knowing that platform. There are so many pitfalls that can ding your business or sink it immediately if you're not following the procedures. Listing practices on eBay can really get you sunk as well. Random chance listings, mystery boxes. I know many people do that, but there's people that have been closed down for good for doing that exact same thing because all of those procedures are against the policies of eBay. Avoiding fees on eBay can get you banned instantly, even if you're not doing it intentionally. Listing the wrong style of auction in the wrong category can do that. There are just so many ways. Setting up policies and shipping standards and return policies. All of those things you have to know before you get into this. There's more to doing eBay or Amazon than just watching a video or reading an article and then thinking you can just hop on there and do it. You have to know the platform. Knowing the platform will save you a ton of stress, a ton of aggravation. Knowing all the ins and outs and how to keep yourself safe and keep your accounts in good standards is the biggest factor. If you can't control or handle your site or your accounts on a specific website, you can be done before you even start. So even before you list an item, there are mistakes you could have made that will sink it. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this. Avoid these mistakes and you will do well on eBay. I've talked to thousands of viewers and subscribers here on YouTube. These same five mistakes are made by people constantly. These are the ones to avoid and the biggest ones. 
If you avoid these top five mistakes, you will do so much better. Your chances of succeeding are greatly increased if you move all of these obstacles out of your way and avoid those mistakes. They're key to a successful business. Things that I've made mistakes on as well, if you know them from the start, you can avoid all of that time, aggravation, and stress in your life. If you avoid them, you can move forward, increase your sales, advance your business, and be successful online reselling. But that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.